الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا وذليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك توغا وتمتعه فيها طويلا اللهم صل على محمد وعاد محمد وعجل فرجهم uh, we talked about the uh, this well-being and the du'as that uh, were mentioned. Quite a few du'as were mentioned. Now today we'll uh, have a little glance on two other du'as and that also it is on the well-being. One of them, it is du'a number seven from Sahih Sajjadiya. And here Imam Sajjad alayhi salatu wasalam, he says, Ya man tuhallu bihi uqadul makareh. Now here it says that in all these worrisome tasks and uh, when misfortunes descend and in times of disa- disasters you seek refuge in that safe haven and that is the existence of Allah wa ta'ala. So the stronger the bond of a person to Allah Jalla wa'ala, the better he feels in all these tough situations that he goes through. Now when we look back into the day of Ashura, for example, it was the toughest day. No day was like Ashura. And you've heard quite a lot uh, in the sayings that we have like, from Ma'asumin, where they say, La yawma ka yawma ka ya Aba Abdullah. There is no day like your day, ya Aba Abdullah. Because that was only one day. A day of disaster, a day when everything befell upon Abu Abdullah al Hussein, and a day when he had to give that test all by himself, without any aid, without any help. So there, in such difficult situations, you need a very strong support system. And the strongest of support systems can be sought from Allah wa ta'ala, and there is no one else. Now, in the last du'a that was uh, uttered by Abba Abdullah al Hussein on the day of Ashura, says, Allahumma anta muta'al al makan, azim al jabarut, shadid al mihal, that Allah, you are the exalted, exalted is your station, supreme is your power, and then your might that is great, ghaniyun an al khala'iq, and you, you do not need any of the creatures. غريض الكبرياء Your might, your rule, it's vast قادر على ما تشاء That is, you've got that might to do whatever you want قريب الرحمة And your mercy is very close صادق الوعد And then whatever you have promised, it's all true سابق النعمة حسن البلاء So all these tests and trials that are befelling upon him, he is in need and he is going through a tough time. But even there you see how much of a hope and how much of a tawakkul and reliance upon the Almighty Abba Abdullah has. There he says, Hasan al-Bala, that the best of trials, and he is the one who tries. Qareebun idha du'it, that when you call him, when you seek him, he is very close to you. Muhitum bima khalaq. And then قَابِلُ التَّوْبَةِ لِمَنْ تَعْبَ إِلَيْكَ And someone who seeks for forgiveness and tawbah and repentance, he accepts it from him. Now one of the other beauties that we see in all of these uh, repentances, for example, because in repentance also we are going through a tough time, we are going through a, um, a difficult phase of our life. We've done wrong, we've done sins and then we want him to forgive. And then he says, إِنَّ اللَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَّابِ Tawwab means he forgives a lot. And then uh, uh, for the person who has repented also, it doesn't say someone who has repented once. No, once no. Tawwab means someone has done bad, he returned. He did bad, he returned. He did bad, he returned. So it's an ongoing doing bad and an ongoing returning to the Almighty. And he also accepts with open arms, says Tawwabun that he accepts. So all that is this beauty that we have in this tawbah, in this tawakkul, in returning to the Almighty Allah, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. 
Now in this dua of Imam, Imam Hussain alayhi salam on the day of Ashura, also we see that there is so much of tawakkul that he has. That is, he is in need, but he is seeking Allah wa ta'ala for all of his might, his beauty, his benevolence. And then he asks Allah Jalla wa ala. So that is the uh, whole concept and idea behind tawassul, behind dua in all these difficult and worrisome status that the states that we fell into. Or for example, uh, in the uh, in the about two hundred years ago, in, when there was this plague in Iraq, and among the ulama and the maraja taqlid of that time is marhum. Ayatullah Muhammad Taqi Shirazi. People, he is that whole soul authority and that globally recognized marja and who stood against the British Empire with his fatwa on, on the tobacco, abandoning all his following not to use any tobacco. And that was a blow against the British Empire. Now he, when people come and ask him that what do we do in this plague, in this waba? that every day people they are dying he says if i rule out if i give a ruling a fatwa a hukum uh, will you abide by it everyone says yes do something so that people who are dying and going through this tough time this death it stops because there wasn't any house where people were not dying he says that you recite Ziyarat Ashura and dedicate the sawab of it to Narjis Khatun, the mother of Imam, As- Imam Al-Asr alayhi salatu wassalam and uh, everyone recited that Ziyarat Ashura with the hundred la'an and salam and every house wherein the Ziyarat was recited no one died and then following them many of the Sunni Muslims also they also followed this prescription and these deaths also they reduce they were reduced so in bala you need a strong support system and the best of support systems is getting back to the almighty allah by way of dua or getting to the ma'sumin alayhim salam who will give you the best of prescriptions and the best of uh, ways how to get things sorted so dua it is that uh, miftah that key to every outlet to every problem so we recited that dua of imam hussein alayhi salam on the day of ashura and likewise there is another dua of imam hussein when he uh, at the zohar of ashura that is also beautiful and it's got so much of uh, tawakkul and relying upon allah wa ta'ala. now in this dua number seven of sahifa sajjadiya also we find a similar uh, tawakkul and relying upon Allah wa ta'ala, that everything uh, says uh, which is unsolvable and everything uh, that we are going through it can be fixed by getting back to you because all these knots that we have in our life they have been created by the Almighty God he has put all these locks he has put all these knots and he can untie them, he can undo them, he can fix them. No one else. Okay, now why does he do all that? Says, Fahiya bi mashiyatika du naqawlika. That is, it is by your desire. It is that mashiyat and the intention of the Almighty God that his command made this happen, that this problem, it comes into our life. So, asbab channels are made by him asbab channels are broken by him and it is his intention it is his mashiyat that takes place now in such situations what do we do until madhubu lil muhimmat wa until mafzau fil mulimmat you are the supplicated one in in worries we call you when we get uh, into problems and the place to fight all these uh, misfortunes also it is you if we come to you you will repel them you will help us and you will put it away and then we come and say to the almighty وَقَدْ نَزَلَ بِي يَا رَبْ مَا قَدْ تَكَّعَدْنِي ثِقْلُهُ وَأَلَمْنَ بِي مَا قَدْ بَحَضَنِي حَمْلُهُ upon me has come all this misfortune O Lord 
something whose weight burdens me. I cannot handle it anymore. It's difficult for me to bear. And now what do I do? Something who's carrying also, it oppresses me. So I ask Allah, bi qudratika, by your might, O oh God, awrattahu alayya wa bi sultanika wa jahtahu ilayh. By your might, you remove it from me. By the authority that you have, O oh Lord, turn it away from me. So that is that beautiful du'a that we have in Sahifa Sajjadiyah, du'a number 7. Now it is the first day of Safar and then it, was, uh, it is mustahab that you offer the, uh, the Salat uh, for the awwal uh, for the first of every lunar calendar. And it's a two rakat prayer that after Surah Al-Hamd in the first rakat, now this uh, you should do it every, every uh, first day of every lunar calendar. And here says that when if you do this two rakat prayer and put a little set a little bit of a sadaqa aside, you will be secured and you've got yourself insured for the duration of the month. Until the end of the month you will be safe. So this two rakat prayer you offer after Suratul Hamd, you recite Suratul Ikhlas thirty times. And in the second rakat also after Suratul Hamd, you recite uh, Suratul Qadr thirty times. So this is the Salat Awwalimah and after that there's a small Dua. Now that Dua also talks about the same thing that قُلْ لَنْ يُسِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا One of the other Duas that we have from Amir al-Mu'mineen Salaamu Allah Now I just mentioned this Namaz Awwalimah, the Namaz for the first of the lunar calendar because I'm going to talk about this Dua from Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali alayhi salam. Uh, now, during Imam says that when there is an outbreak of illness, like what we have now, uh, this pandemic, this COVID uh, situation that we have. So in all these difficult times when there is an outbreak of illness, it is recommended to keep this dua at, in your homes and then recite it in the morning or after your Fajr prayers. Now, Marhum Ayatollah Khonsari, one of the great maraji at taqlid of the 1950s who passed away in the early days of the Islamic Revolution, uh, he says that when there was this outbreak of cholera in Iran, there were deaths in almost every house. In some houses, more than one people dying. Well, generally, there was someone dying in every house. A lot of deaths. Now, he says that those who had this dua with them and they recited it regularly, they were safe. Now, what is that dua? It is known as dua of the seven ayats. Now, these seven ayats from the Holy Quran, I'll just quickly recite these ayat, and one of them I just recited uh, that we recite after the prayers that we offer for the first of the lunar calendar. Now, the first ayah in this dua, it is قُلْ لَنْ يُسِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Say nothing will befell upon us except what Allah has ordained for us. And He is our Master and in Allah um, we put our trust, we trust Him. That's one. The second ayah وَإِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِذُرٍ فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُو وَإِنْ يُرِدْكَ بِخَيْرٍ فَلَا رَادَّ لِفَضْلِهِ يُسِيبُ بِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ That should Allah visit you with some disaster, there is no one to remove it except for Allah. So a problem has come, it has come from Him. It needs to be removed, it needs to be removed by Him. So that is again the ayah which gives us a lot of tawakkul, teaches us that we should rely upon him in all these tensed situations. Says that and if he intends good for me, definitely good will happen and no one can hinder and stop that good getting to me. And if he has intended bad for example or some evil to befell upon me, that also Although the ayah doesn't say that فَلَا رَادَّ لِفَضْلِ يُسِيبُ بِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ So khair, if he has intended for me, that will definitely get to me. 
Now, this, these two ayat that were just recited, we recited on the first day of the lunar calendar as well. As well. وَمَا مِنْ دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا That is, Allah, He has taken the charge of providing the rizq of every creation of His. إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا It is upon Him, the sustenance and the rizq of every creation. يَعْلَمُ مُسْتَقَرَّهَا وَمُسْتَوْدَعَهَا كُلٌّ فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ He knows that, um, uh, that sustenance where it lies, uh, where it's going to be temp temporary, where it is going to be permanent, whatever that sustenance is and wherever it has to come to me from, he knows it. كُلٌّ فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ It has all been recorded, it has all been uh, manifested in the book. Now, the fourth ayah in this dua of these seven ayat, وَكَأَيَّنْ مِنْ دَابَّةٍ لَا تَحْمِلُ رِزْقَهَا اللَّهِ يَرْزُقُهَا وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُونَ عَلِيمٌ Another beautiful ayah says that how many of an animal there is that does not carry its own provision. Allah provides them and He provides you. And He is the all-hearing and the all-knowing. So everything is from Him. Provisions from Him. Rizq from Him. In one of these uh, ayats where Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, he says that, الَّذِي خَلَقَنِي وَهْبَهُوَ يَهْدِينِي He is the one who created me and He is the one who guides me. وَالَّذِي يُمِيتُنِي ثُمَّ يُحْيِينِ He is the one who will kill me and he is the one who will give me life, who will revive me, resurrect me. وَالَّذِي يَشْفِ And he is the one who gives shifa when I fell ill. وَإِذَا مَرِضْتُ فَهُوَ يَشْفِينِ And when I fell ill, he is the one who gives me shifa. وَالَّذِي أَتْمَوْا أَنْ يَغْفِرَ لِي خَطِيئَةِ يَوْمَ الدِّينِ And he is the one who I have hope in him that he will forgive me all my sins on the day of judgment. That is that height of tawakkul and the height of hope that Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam he teaches us regarding us that how we have to be connected to the Almighty Allah. Now the fifth ayah in this dua of the seventh uh, seven ayat is ma yaftahillahu lil nas min rahmatin fala mumsika laha wa ma yumsiku fala mursila lahu min ba'dih wa huwa al aziz al hakim whatever mercy allah unfolds for the people no one can withhold it when he has intended to get that mercy to you it will get to you no one can hinder, no one can stop. The sixth ayah is that قُلْ أَفَرَأَيْتُمْ مَا تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونَ اللَّهِ إِنْ أَرَادَنِيَ اللَّهُ بِالذُّرِّ هَلْ هُنَّ كَاشِفَاتُ ذُرِّهِ Says that if he has intended as some kind of a mishap to come to me, some kind of a distress to come to me, can anyone remove that distress? No one can. It will come to me. So that again, over there also we need tawakkul, we need to rely upon me, uh, upon him. Likewise, it's that mercy. If it is to get to me, it will get to me and no one can hinder and stop. The last ayah in this seven, dua of the seventh ayat, seven ayat, we say, حَسْبِ اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَهُوَ رَبُّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَظِيمِ says that uh, hasbi Allah, that Allah is sufficient for me. La ilaha illa huwa, there is no God but Him. Alayhi tawakkaltu, upon Him I rely. Wa huwa rabbul arsh al-azim, and He is Lord of the mighty throne. Now, after these seven ayat, I say, astashfi'u bi rabbil falaq. I seek, and uh, I seek the shifa'at and the mediation of the Lord who splits the seed min ma khalaq from the evil of what has been created wa a'udhu bima sha Allah I seek refuge in the Almighty Allah in all what He intends la quwwata illa billahi al-aliyya al-azim there is no might but that from the Almighty Allah tabarak wa ta'ala so that again it's a beautiful dua 
you can find it online it's dua of the seven ayat and in these days that we are in all these ayat they help us now when we look into all of these few duas that we quickly recited today dua seven dua of the seven ayat and then the dua of imam hussein alayhi salam his last dua on the day of ashura we see that it is tawakkul and then relying upon allah wa ta'ala that helps us eases us and then saves us from all this distress and misfortune that we are going through and throughout what we learn is that it is iman that is required if iman is there the stronger the iman the easier it becomes to bear to, to go in this tough and difficult phase that we are going through and that is what we ask allah allahumma inni as'aluka imanan tubashiru bihi qalbi that allah you give me an iman that is close to my heart and I get to a yaqeen, a certainty, wherein hatta a'lama annahu lan yusibani until I come to a point that nothing would come to me illa ma katabta li but that what you have written for me waradhini min al-aish Allah make me happy with my living bima qasamta li whatever you have planned for me whatever you have distributed for me Allah make me happy with that share of mine Ya Arhamar Rahimin. so that is highly re required that when we when it comes to Iman Iman should be such because uh, when we look into the Rizq for example this uh, or the destiny for example sometimes you see that it is in your favor sometimes it is against you um, at times everything is good for me at times it becomes tensed and difficult and against me so in both cases I need help when it is easy also I need help when it is tough also I need help now people they think that oh, walk, oh, now walking on earth and walking on water in both cases we need help from God on water we cannot walk because it's liquid and we will fall but then we see that awliya Allah they can walk on water for them it's they can do it that is because of that iman because it is that same God who allows you to walk on a solid rock earth it is that same God who allows you to walk on that liquid uh, water so it is that tawakkul and that yaqeen they have in the Almighty that makes things possible for them so we also have to get to a rank to that yaqeen has to be there in all cases we need help and that help can be got and sought from the Almighty Allah now when we look into the riwayat for example when they talk about iman for example there is a uh, hadith says that uh, from Imam Baqi Imam Rizal was once inquired the meaning of yaqeen the, in reply he says Imam Baqir has such interpreted التوكل على الله that you rely upon the Almighty وَالتَّسْلِيمُ لِلَّهِ and you submit to the Almighty Allah وَالرِّضَى بِمَا قَسَمْتَ and be happy with whatever He has distributed and then وَالرِّضَى بِقَضَاءِ اللَّهِ and then contentment and be happy with whatever He has decreed for you وَالتَّفْوِيذ إِلَى اللَّهِ and then you surrender yourself to the Almighty so that is Iman, that is I'm doing what I'm doing and I'm happy with whatever has been planned and designed for me and I'm surrendering myself to the Almighty Allah and that is Tawakkul. Now, in another quote, Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, he reports from Amir al muminin Ali alayhi salam, says, La yajidu abdun ta'mal Iman. A servant, he will never get to the taste of Iman, will never be able to taste Iman Hatta ya'lama until he knows Anna ma asabahu lam yakun That is whatever is happening is happening by the divine command and then and if there is benefit to come to me that benefit will definitely come to me and then if someone is to harm me and then Allah doesn't want that harm to get to me he will not be able to harm me so that is how we have to have that Iman whatever is happening happening by the divine command or for example in the Munajat that we have from Prophet Musa alayhi salam Prophet Musa 
uh, is Kalimullah. He speaks to the Almighty and gets rep replies from the Almighty God. Prophet Musa says, Ayyu khalqika ahabbu ilayk, says God, from among the creation who is the most liked and the beloved creation of yours. The Almighty says, Man idha akhazdu habibahu salamani. When I take away his beloved from him, he still is friends with me. He is happy with me. That is height of Iman. Now many a times we do see in the communities, if a loved one passes away, then how much of an ill statement people they say and then cry and nag and complain. At times they say stuff which shouldn't be said and uttered. Now they do it because they are going through a tough time. Now here in that tough time we are being tested. Allah says, Man idha akhazdu habibahu salamani. When I take away his Habib, his friend, his beloved, he is friends with me. And then Allah says, Qala, فَأَيُّ خَلْقِكَ أَنْتَ عَلَيْهِ سَاخِتْ Prophet Musa says, God, tell me from among the creations, who are you upset with? Who do you, don't, who you not like? قَالَ مَنْ يَسْتَخِيرُنِي فِي الْأَمْرِ فَإِذَا قَضَيْتُ لَهُ سَخَتَ قَضَائِي Says someone who asks me, for something and he wants the good and I design and prescribe the good and lay it out for him now then he goes against my plan says that is the one who I don't like <laughs> so we have to be content with the divine destiny with all these balas that befell before us now bala for a mu'min in uh, Rivayat, they say that it is for two reasons. It is either for the Uluv Darajat, meaning that the, uh, the Almighty Allah, He wants the ranks of this Mu'min to uh, elevate, or it is for the forgiveness of sins. There were so many sins in my life, and they need to be shed. He is most, most merciful. He wants uh, me to be cleansed before I leave this earth. So at times all these difficult situations, they come in my life so that I go through this turbulence and tough time and as a result I get purified. That is that whole plan and design of the Almighty Allah. Now what about awliyaullah who have no sins in their life like all the shuhada and the shuhada of Karbala for example or Ma'asumin alayhim salam who have no sins, no wrong, no error in their life now the tough time and the bala, the turbulence that comes in their lives, it is for the uluv, that is Allah. He further wants to elevate their ranks and then they go through all of this tough time and these tough phases in their life. So these du'as, they are beautiful, they give us hope and then they attach us further and more to the Almighty Allah as a result of which it becomes easier for us to handle all these tough situations. So being content with the divine destiny, we have to work on that. And um, Allah wa ta'ala in one of the other ahadith al Qudsiya, he says that Fima Allah Jalla Waz ila Musa ibn Imran, Ya Musa, Ma khalaqtu khalqan ahabbu ilayya min abdi al mu'min. I haven't created anyone from all of this my creation much more beloved to me than my than a believing uh, faithful mu'min wa inni innam abtalaytuhu lima huwa khayrun lah and then allah says at times i make him go through these tough times these trials these mishaps because it is good for him lima huwa khayrun lah wa ana a'lamu bima yaslahu abdi alayh and i the god I know what is best for my servant. Now the Almighty says, فَلْيَصْبِرْ ala بَلَائِي He has to be patient in these balas, in these tests and trials. وَلْيَشْكُرْ نَعْمَائِي He must be thankful and grateful to all my blessings. وَلْيَرْضَ بِقَضَائِي He must be content with the destiny and the decree. أَكْتُبْهُ فِالسِدِّقِينَ if he does that, that is if he is patient, if he is grateful, and if he is content with the divine decree, 
I will write him among the Siddiqeen, among the truthful in my before me. Ida Amila Biradai wa Ata'a Amri if he was happy with this decree and if he was obedient to my command. So that is beautiful that we have to get connected to the Almighty in all of these difficult times. Sometimes it's family members who are who become tough, sometimes community becomes tough, sometimes these uh, this pandemic or these balas or whatever situation comes which becomes tedious and difficult to handle in all of these cases we need help and the best of help can be sought from the Almighty Allah and to make it further easier for us to handle these situations Allah has placed the Ahlul Bayt salam, so that we get to them for an easier access to Allah Taala. Now in Dua Iftitah that we recited in the month of Ramadan, there we say that لَعَلَّ الَّذِي أَبْتَغَ عَنِّي هُوَ خَيْرٌ لِي لِعِلْمِكَ بِعَاقِبَةِ الْأُمُورِ Now God, I ask you for many things and you let, sometimes you delay the acceptance of du'as. It should be, I should be aware that such a delay could be a blessing in disguise. Many a times I want things from Allah to be given to me and they are not given, they are delayed. And then down the lane, down the road and further down in, after many years, I come to, this, um, uh, yeah, come to this solution that if that it was such a blessing, those du'as were not accepted. Because if they were accepted, I would have been in a in, in different, even furthermore difficult situation. So du'as at times not being accepted are blessings in disguise. Being granted by the Almighty Allah, that is what He has designed for me and that is best for me. Just like these prescriptions, the doctor, he knows you, what all illnesses I have what, and then um, what my body, how my body is working and he gives a prescription to me. Now that prescription is only for me. I cannot give it to someone else because it's not going to be uh, otherwise on him. It's going to be against that person. So for me, this pres prescription works. For him, it doesn't work. Allah, the Almighty, he is the best of designers, the best of creators. Ahsanul Khaliqeen, the best of creators. He knows what is best for me and he writes the best of prescriptions for me. Says, لِعِلْمِكَ بِعَاقِبَةِ umur. Aqibat means the end results. I don't know the end results. He knows the end results. Because he knows the end results, he writes something for me. He makes a prescription for me which is best for me. Quran has another ayah. It says that, Asa an takrahu shay'an wa huwa khayrun lakum. That many a times you detest things, you hate things, but in reality it is good for you. Many a times you love things, in reality it is bad for you. So here many examples can be given. One of the examples is that for example a war, a battle. So a battle is bad, a war is bad. You see people cut, even being killed, it's all that loot and plunder and all the havoc the devastation that you see it's ugly war is ugly battles are ugly but then allah says huwa khayrun lakum in all these battles in this eight year war or the sacred defense that we had in iran after this eight year it's the strongest of nations on the surface of this earth now that is because they went through a tough time in those days of the war in the early days it was difficult, everyone crying, all these uh, bodies being uh, felling down, hundreds and thousands of martyrs being killed, every now and then missiles and bombs. Now this is something that we saw in our lives. But then Quran says, Asa an takrahu shay'an, many a times you don't like things, you hate things. Wa huwa khayrun lakum. The, so it, was, it is good for you. So down the road we did not see. So likewise, on a smaller scale, these difficulties that come in our lives, in a family unit, in a small community, those difficult situations are also good for us and we will get to know the beauty of it down the lane, down the road. Or for example, when we see the statements of Hazrat Zainab Salamullahi Alaiha, she said that, Mara illa jamila, that I saw everything beautiful. 
what was beautiful in Karbala? Nothing is beautiful. You see, uh, you see all these noble people being cut down, being killed, being slayed, and then all that ugliness is there, and then how many the tents are being burnt down, being taken into captivity. Nothing is beautiful. She says, Mara'aitu illa jamila. Whatever I saw was beautiful. That is, she's seeing the end results. End results are that, uh, some of the end results are that, that people when, who are serving the Imam of their time, Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Now, for example, the Sahabi uh, who was shielding Imam Hussein when he was offering his prayers, and initially they said, okay, we'll uh, stop the war, you say your prayers. But then they lied. The moment Imam started to offer his prayers, they started shooting these arrows. Now this Sahabi, he shields himself in front of Abu Abdullah and he takes all the arrows upon himself and says, Imam, Ya Ibn Rasulullah, Ya Abu Abdullah, be quick. And then Imam ends his prayers, he falls in the laps of the Imam and then says, Awafay to Ya Abu Abdullah, was I loyal to you, Ya Abu Abdullah? Imam says, Naam wa anta amami fil jannah. Yes, and you are before me in the heaven. So that is the beauty of Karbala. Although we see that it is painful, it is difficult, it is ugly, it is being killed and blood and all that is there. But that's a beauty. Obedience towards the master, obedience towards the Imam. Or the other beauty that we see in the statements of Imam Hazrat Zainab Salamullahi Alayha. Now this Arba'in walk. 25, 30 million people getting together, moving towards Karbala. That is that beauty. That is that beauty that Hazrat Zainab saw in the, as the end results. That is that is how everything will be paved in the favor of Abba Abdullah al Hussein, and how that divine command and that divine decree is in the favor of Abba Abdullah al Hussein. So Asa and Takrahu Shay'an. So in all of these ayat that were recited all of these du'as that were recited that what we get to is we have to have that tawakkul in Allah hope in Allah whatever is happening is by his divine command and we have to work on that now when we look into this tawakkul for example tawakkul means to rely upon Allah Jalla ba'ala so it doesn't mean that it's uh, teaching us to be lazy. No, La laziness is not allowed in Islam. Tawakkul means you rely upon Allah. You do your homework to the best of your abilities and then you rest and you trust in the Almighty Allah. So you've done all you have to do. Rasulullah, he comes and sees that it is time when everyone should have been working. But then this, pe this lot of people, they are in the masjid offering prayers. He comes and says that, uh, Man antum, who are you? That is, what kind of a people are you? They replied, Nahnul mutawakkilun, we rely upon God. Because we, they heard an ayah that was revealed, Man yatawakkil ala Allah fa huwa hasbuh, whosoever relies upon Allah, Allah is sufficient for him. So they heard that ayah, say they stopped working, and they are in the mosque offering prayers. Rasulullah says, La. Bal antum muttakilun. No, you are not among those who rely upon Allah. You are a burden on the society. Meaning that when it is time to work, you have to work. And now that you are working, with that work, your heart and your soul rests on the Almighty, saying that God, I'm doing what I have to do. Rest is yours. You are the provider. You are the benefactor. You are the one who has uh, designed everything for me what I have to do I am doing the rest is yours I'm working to learn to study that ilm which needs to be given to me it is you who have to give it to me so I make the arrangements at the same time I trust him I rely upon him that is tawakkul doing nothing and sitting sitting idly and then asking him to have uh, things to happen, they will never happen. And he does not want that to happen and it will never make it happen. Now when we look into Prophet uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, or for example, uh, on and off recite Surat Maryam. Surat Maryam gives a lot of tawakkul, gives a lot of hope. And all of the ayat, right from the starting of the Surat Al-Maryam until the end, they are beautiful. They give you so much hope uh, and it's... Uh, 
at the same time the tune of that surah it's such beautiful here says that prophet zakaria that kullama dakhala alayha zakaria al mihrab wajada indaha rizqa whenever prophet zakaria he comes into the mihrab that niche in that mosque sees there is food by hazrat maryam and then says from where is that food that says from allah tbaraka wa ta'ala qalu that is from allah tbaraka wa ta'ala as a result of relying upon the almighty allah he bestows he blesses he gives in beautiful ways or for example in quran uh, when you've heard this story of prophet ibrahim when everything was uh, he, he was punished to be burnt and the fire that was set ablaze for him it was huge massive no one could get close to that fire they had to prepare a swing a menjaniq in which he was placed and he was flung and thrown from a distance into the fire now here prophet ibrahim is in need he needs help he is being thrown and about to fell in this fire says uh, quran says harriquhu wansuru alihatakum in kuntum fa'ilin burn him your gods if they can help they can help Now when Prophet Ibrahim was placed in this menjaniq and they intended to throw him into the fire Jibril he descends Jibril says alaka hajatun do you have a wish Ibrahim here prophet prophet Ibrahim that height of tawakkul that he says i do need but not you i don't need Jibril says i am in need and he knows i am in need who has created me says that height of tawakkul of prophet ibrahim was such that he says hasbi min suali ilmuhu bihali hasbi min suali means i don't need to ask i don't need to say that to him that i am in need he knows what i'm uh, the situation i am in prophet ibrahim about to fell into the fire he says ya allah ya wahidu ya ahad ya samad ya man lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakun lahu kufuwan ahad says o oh allah o oh one o oh unique o oh eternal who has never been begotten no anyone has been born from him there is no one but he is the only one the moment he said that allah says qul ya nar kuni bardan wa salaman ala ibrahim fire be cold and then be peaceful upon prophet ibrahim alayhi salam so all this is the wakul that we have to have in the almighty allah and you can get to it by all of these different duas that were recited and in all these tests and trials the only way out is uh, is having a stronger bond with the existence of allah tbaraka wa taala and he helps May Allah Jalla wa Ala help us understand these glorious ayat, riwayat, duas of Ma'asumin alayhim as Keep us all safe from every bala, every mishap in this world and in the hereafter. Between us, Quran and Ahlul Bayt alayhim as never ever come across a moment of separation. Wa'ajjil fi faraji mawlana sahib al-zaman. Allahumma salla ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa'ajjil farajahum. Recording stopped. Almost.